Hello, my name is Tony and this is Keep It Simple and uh, today I like to talk about frequency counters. We have uh, a few different types here. Um, I like to talk about what you use it for, how they work, what are the differences and what you should, uh, what they have in common, uh, what you find on, on all the counters and what makes a good counter a good counter so let's start yeah what you use a frequency counter for uh well of course to yeah count the frequency um it's um yeah it's a very important tool if you work with uh, radios like i do uh, i'm adjusting radios and you need to know if the frequency is right so what the frequency counter uh, does, if you have here your uh, two-way radio, it's transmitting on 144-800. If I start transmitting, it will show up as 144, well, almost 800. Uh, yeah, it could be that uh, the, the Marconi is still uh, heating up. So it's, its oscillator is not on the correct frequency yet, but it's more or less uh, 800. So this is what it does it shows you the frequency you are transmitting on so the the frequency counter just uh, counts waves and uh, yeah it doesn't matter too much what kind of wave because he is just counting the the, the upwards 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 and he does the same with this so i illuminated a little bit uh, the the flanks so it will count between this and this and then he will count this as one and the same is here and the same is here but if we stick to the radio waves it would be just uh, this one so we have all the different frequency counters well of course to count the waves they need at least an input well this one has two inputs one for the super low frequencies and one for the normal radio frequencies. Uh, this one is exactly the same. Two inputs, one for the lower and one for the higher frequencies. Well, the same you find here. Channel A, channel B, same here, channel A, channel B. This one actually is a signal generator, but it does have a little frequency counter, so it has only one input. So there, you put in a little antenna or you put your uh, probe and it will count frequencies uh, the second thing they all have in common that is the gate so um, i will explain that later but this gate is sitting to one two three and you see that the count takes longer i will explain that here yeah, is the same it's 0 0.3, 1, 10, 100 seconds. Yeah, it's the same. You also have a gate, and it can be switched with the gate uh, button. Yeah, 0 0.1, 1, and 10 seconds gate. Yeah, it's the same. This one is uh, variable. And you can see that the point is uh, shifting also. Yep, even in this little counter you have the gate, 1 second, 10 seconds, 100 seconds. So that's another thing they have in common. And why do they have this gate? I will explain. Okay, the gate times. What does it do and what we need it for? Um, I will oversimplify this. So if you are already uh, known with this, then you probably think it's too simple. But uh, I think it is, uh, for example, it's okay. So let's say we are counting 50 hertz. 50 hertz means uh, that we have 50 pulses in one second. So we, we are counting for one second. We count 50, that means it's 50 hertz. So we can display uh, 50 in the screen. But if we want to be more precise, then we say, okay, let's put the gate to 10 seconds. Then if we count for 10 seconds, it's the same frequency, we should can count at least 500 pulses. And that we divide back again to 10, and then we should end up with 50 Hz. It is very nice, nothing changed you think. Well, it does, because 
what if we count 10 seconds and instead of 500 we find 502 pulses we divide that back and then we get 50.2 so you see by by uh, enlarging the gate time you get more precise well the same is if we go even further if we count 100 seconds we would find 5000 we divide it back um, and then we end up with 50 hertz but let's say that this number was also rounded and we counted not 502 but 522 so and then we end up with 50.22 so we need a longer gate time to be more precise otherwise all these numbers that we have on the display do not make any sense so okay to uh, explain this i have a little uh, oscillator it should do uh, 10 megahertz and if you can see as you can see on the on the short k time it says it's 10 and then it's even says it's 10.00 sometimes 10.01 and this is on the short k time of 0.3 seconds so now we're going to enlarge the k time and now you can see it's even more precise it's 10 0 0 0 1 and then we're going to count a bit longer k time i'm not sure how much this is and now it even now it's uh, taking a lot more time to count because we have a very long gate time but as you can see we have a lot more uh, digit behind the comma which makes it more precise and, be and before we thought it was because of the rounding we thought it was 10 and a bit and now it turns out it's actually a little bit below 10 because we are counting now uh, more precise same is for this frequency counter we are here on a point one, so I can change the gate to a second. You see, this one even has more digit to uh, become more precise. And of course the same with the 10 seconds. But also you see, you need to wait a lot longer because it needs to... Uh, count the whole uh, gate time and you might notice also that this counter doesn't say uh, does say a different result than the other one and I will explain later why the accuracy of some are good and some are less good uh, don't get uh, confused with all these buttons here because this is also a, a function generator so if we focus only on the counter, it's only the two entries and the gate times and then you can hold the result and that, that's about it. It's, it's, in that sense it's almost the same as this one. And okay, yeah, same for this counter. It says now uh, 10 and a bit and if we increase the gate time it will add zeros to become more precise. Also, we need to wait longer for the result, but then in the end you end up with something more accurate, and it really takes some time to update. That, that, that could be annoying, if you want to be very precise you really need to wait a, a, a long time. Well, same for this one, its uh, frequency is here in the top and you see it's uh, updating. Okay, well, this is a newer generation uh, frequency counter, so it is, uh, even though the gate time is uh, 0.3 seconds, it is still uh, pretty accurate and uh, if we increase the gate time to one second, um, yeah, you can see it's even more precise. What we also can do, we can put it to 10 seconds. But as you may notice that even though the, the gate time is 10 seconds, the update time is about uh, 2 seconds. So here they did some sort of trick by, by shifting the count every time. So that if you put your K 
update on 10 seconds. The update is a, a, a lot faster. They, they, yeah, somehow can the updates in between, and that is great because especially if you put it to 100 seconds, 100 seconds is a long time to wait. But yeah, if you want to make very uh, accurate adjustments, it is uh, probably what you want. Um, so let's see how long this uh, takes. I still see little updates in between, so it's uh, absolutely not uh, 100 seconds. So that's really smart about this one. Uh, what makes a counter accurate? Uh, accuracy, yeah. Um, because if we, we, as we have seen here, it is all about counting in how many pulses we have in a second. So uh, the frequency counter himself needs to know how long is a second <laughs> and he can only know this by by having his own time base so the accuracy of the frequency counter basically depends all on his uh, local time references which is his little oscillator inside this frequency counter i built myself in the 90s so it should be almost like 25 years uh, ago and this time based here is uh, based on a, on, a, on a crystal, a quartz crystal, which is just oscillating. And because uh, also in time, the oscillation just changed a little bit. So that means um, he doesn't know exactly how much is a second. And then you can adjust it by this. Um, this, this circuit is, it's, it's okay, but it is, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not compensated by temperature. So when the machine is switched on for a while, it is a little bit off. So that means also that the readout will be a little bit off based on the temperature the machine is uh, working on. So in a sense, it's good, but this, this time base makes it uh, less accurate. So this is what uh, the crystal looks like. And this is just uh, a, a normal crystal, so you need to build a little uh, oscillator around it, so it will oscillate on its frequency. This one is uh, 10 MHz, uh, which is uh, a, a usual uh, time base for uh, the, the new frequency counters. The newer frequency counter usually have this. In my oscilloscope is uh, a little oscillator like this. And you just put your you put your five volts, and the signal comes out. And this, and you can see it's a it's it's a lot bigger. This one is temperature compensated, so this this keeps its own temperature inside. It is a little often, and that's why it's a lot more stable. You want to be a lot more stable. You can even buy this. Uh, Trimble uh, oscillators, as you can see, it is 10 megahertz, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, almost uh, up to an hertz. These things also are temperature compensated, and uh, yeah, I have a little often inside that makes them uh, more precise. But also, these things age, so um, yeah, and an older frequency counter because of the aging of the oscillator will uh, be less accurate. How can we make a perfect uh, time base for uh, for oscilloscopes, for frequency counters, for everything? Because all these machines need a time base, and um, yeah, and it's a bit crazy to build your own atomic clock. So, uh, what people did, they had this uh, GPS receiver, um, and the GPS receiver also always uh, the satellites send the, the correct time and the, the, the whole GPS system is based on an atomic clock so that means that the GPS you receive is very nice to be used for uh, uh, as, as a frequency base so what they do inside this uh, GPS receiver they build a, yeah, a little oscillator also 10 megahertz but it is correcting itself over time and it uses the GPS time. So if this clock is running for five days, 
you can be sure that your 10 megahertz is 10 megahertz as you can see on this display the only thing that your frequency counter needs is this external reference input um, as you can see here reference in 10 megahertz and that you find uh, uh, you can find only on the on the better models so um, I hope this all helped you have seen a lot of uh, frequency counters you've seen all the basic controls you don't get distracted by all the buttons that you find on it because you only need a few um, yeah I'd, uh, that's it um, well if you find the video uh, interesting you can uh, give me a like in the bottom the thumbs up or uh, if you find my channel interesting you can subscribe in the top right and uh, thank you from this side hope to see you soon